go greeting cyberdogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Lumberjack Wren Diggity Dog coming at you from just outside the gates of the Molshire in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. Hello everybody, what is going down in Chinatown, my friends? Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're excited for a brand new week on planet Earth. It's Monday for the Ren Diggity Dog. If you're from the future, hello, future person. It's probably not Monday. Although, if it is Monday, then this is some sort of Monday-ception going on over here, man. Kind of freaking myself out. Let's get back to business. The business of Minecraft. Welcome back <laughs> to Minecraft Survival, my dudes. Oh, man. I am trying to keep it together today, guys. My brain is literally a little bit cooked right now. Uh, as in, if somebody took the brain out of my head, placed it into a baking tray, a little bit of olive oil, a bit of salt and pepper, and uh, just stuck it in the oven because it's exceptionally warm in England today. Once again, we're having some sort of a crazy heat wave coming through England this summer. Um, it's been great. It's just very warm in my house. And it's especially warm when I start recording because when I start recording, I start sweating in places that human beings are not supposed to sweat. And uh, it's mildly uncomfortable. You see, here in England, our weather is so terrible for most of the year that we are very unprepared for when the weather is actually good and we actually have sunshine. <laughs> um, we just don't expect it. We don't see it coming. We don't have fans. We don't have clothing for hot weather. Um, and we just all sort of get completely wrecked by hot weather. I'm, I'm sure if uh, any of you guys out there have British friends, you'll probably hear them complaining about how hot it is. And uh, yeah, indeed, I am also struggling a little bit. But we're going to plod on, my dudes. We are going to play Minecraft today. And it is going to be awesome. Last episode, we started working on our bedroom in the Molehole Castle, didn't we? I think we could probably see the windows of it over there. Yes! Oh, nice. I'm out here cutting down some trees. And uh, when I cut down trees in a survival world, uh, especially near my base, I like to replant the trees that I cut down, right? Um, I like to get oak trees from the forest because oak trees are kind of annoying trees in Minecraft. They can either grow nice and small like this one, gives you about, you know, three to five logs per tree, or they can grow up into these massive ones over here, which are kind of annoying to cut down because they've got branches that go all over the show and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to try to get all the branches out of the tree. So uh, I like to get my oak trees naturally, so to speak, organic oak tree collection um, instead of planting them all in a row or something like this, right? If you plant them in a row like this and then bone meal them all like I do with spruce trees. It's just, for me, anyway, it's a little bit easier, a little bit more simple just to come out into the forests and collect the trees. But of course, uh, you need to replant them so that it doesn't make the area outside of your base look really horrible, right? So I just put some saplings in the offhand, cut down a couple of trees, replace them, and uh, slowly but surely those saplings will grow when we're in the area and uh, the place will keep on looking good. There's another great way, actually, by the way, to get rid of birch trees, too. Uh, I'm not a big fan of birch, tr birch trees. I don't think they look particularly beautiful, so I like to get rid of them. And uh, we can replace the birch tree with a little bit of an oak tree sapling. And uh, slowly but surely, we can start weeding out the uh, the birch trees from the forests around the Molshire. And uh, I guess it's, you know, it's... It's it's a nice, simple way to get rid of birch trees. And every now and then we need a little bit of birch wood for something. Uh, although at this moment in time, the only good use for birch logs and planks is crafting tables and sticks, in my humble opinion. Um, anyway, that should be enough oak wood. Yeah, it's almost about a stack of oak wood. That'll do for us, man. That'll do for us. We're going to be working a little bit more on our bedroom today, man. I've got some sweet, sweet plans for this thing. Uh, last episode, we got pretty far. We created a staircase that goes from the second floor of the molehole lobby up into the bedroom. We also connected the bedroom up to the life tree uh, core elevator thing and uh, today i want to start working on the interiors so that should be pretty cool now before we get to that i do want to have a quick chat with you guys about the moleshire itself we've been plodding on doing some rather interesting stuff over the last few episodes haven't we we've created this sort of uh, ladder elevator that goes up the middle of a tree um, and we've created some weird staircases and some weird entrances here and there and what i've been trying to do here in the base is trying to make our journey through the base as easy as possible without making it really sort of 
I don't know, um, simple or um, symmetrical, so to speak, right? I don't want to have like a grid pattern or something in my base. I want my base to be accessible from all areas, but at the same time, I want it to be sort of uh, in, in true gobbit fashion, just sort of unplanned, undesigned, a little bit chaotic, so to speak, right? And uh, that has been the goal for me for this base, is to try and keep it like as chaotic as possible, but at the same time, to make sure that we as a Minecraft player can use the base um, in a way that isn't annoying, right? Uh, so I thought what we could do is kick things off today by just going through like a, a general like day in the life of the Moleshire type thing um, and do a couple of tasks to see how painful it might be to actually use our base as a Minecraft player, right? So uh, let's kick things off with, I don't know, let's set ourselves a task, shall we? We want to create, um, hmm... We want to create an ender pearl, okay? That's the task. And we're going to be starting over here. We've just come out of the mines of the dog. We've been doing some mining. And uh, uh, we want to create an ender pearl. Although, maybe what we should... What, let's start with a simpler task, right? We've just come out of the mines of the dog. And we've got some stuff to smelt. So we need to get to some sort of uh, a, a smelting facility. So that we can smelt down all of the ores that we've done. This is an easy one, right? We're going to come up here. And uh, we're going to head over to the blacksmith. Who's just across the bridge here up at the fields of the dog. And uh, that is, of course, Black's uh, uh, freaking, what's his name? <laughs> Griswold the blacksmith will be able to come in here and be able to cook down our ores and whatnot over here in the smelting facility. So that was pretty easy. Hi, Griswold. What's happening, my dude? Um, so that's an easy one, right? Nice and simple to get here. Now, what if we were to come from another direction, I suppose? Um, or shall we say, what happens if we had another task, so to speak? Let's get back down to the bottom. That was an easy one. That, that was maybe a little bit too easy. Let's set ourselves a little bit more of a difficult one, right? Uh, maybe sleep the night away. Uh, task number two, we need more chicken. We need more cooked chicken, okay? That seems like a pretty decent task to set ourselves. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can get there from here. We could go the janky way up there to the chicken farm. We could go all the way around the back of... Uh, of mole town up there or we could make use of the passages and um, staircases and all that jazz that we have been setting up inside of the mole hole itself right and i think that's probably going to be the easiest way to get up to uh, ren fried chicken so let's give it a go right we're going to come into the mole hole and uh, we're going to use all of the different things that we have uh, been putting in place now. And we know that to get up to the top of Mole Town, we need to come up to the second floor over here. And last episode, I came up the wrong staircase here, didn't I? Oh, jeez. I actually went the longest way around possible. <laughs> last episode, we set up this little entrance into the live tree. That's going to take us up to the second level, uh, which is going to be our bedroom. And then one more level up, the third level, or is this the fourth level? This will take us up to uh, Mole Town and, of course, take us into the entrance of uh, Ren Fried Chicken. So, boom, we can come through here and uh, we can trade with New Gobelia and <laughs> get ourselves some emeralds. So, that's pretty awesome. So, now we're up here, right? And we want to get back into the Mole Hall. We want to get back down to our map, I suppose. And uh, I guess the easiest way to do that would be to use the Life Tree. Uh, but maybe we set ourselves another task. We want to get to our um, our nether portal, okay? We want to go to the nether right now and get ourselves some quartz or some blaze rods or something equally silly. How the freak do we get there from here? Well, we know that we do have a nether portal, but it is a little bit of a distance. It's all the way down at the Spider-Matic, isn't it? It's all the way down at the bottom of the Mines of the Dog. However... We very sneakily, a few episodes ago, set up a bit of a secret passage around here, didn't we? And it, it is all the way down here. We still need to make a nice connection for it. Uh, but we can actually get to our, our nether portal from down here, right? And uh, if we follow this cave, which we still need to make awesome, because at the moment it's looking a little bit janktastic. But this is kind of a quick way to get down to our nether portal from Mole Town. Boom! There is our nether portal taking us to the nether. Very nice. And uh, there's a freaking skeleton and a spider and a creeper in there. So two skeletons, in fact. We'll just leave those behind, shall we? Uh, so we've been to the nether. Oh, my goodness. Nope. Bad. Bad. Well, that was absurdly derpy, my friends. Not exactly the plan that I had for this testing of the Volshire base. Oh my goodness, let's go down and see if we could get our stuff. I'm assuming that zombie, yep, uh, that zombie has put on some clothing and he's got the jank blade right now, which is bad because that thing's got fire aspect on it. And uh, yeah, here we are, our dead corpse all over the place. Guys, please feel free to face palm in the comments below that I deserve uh, the most face palmage of face palms, I think, for that one. That was, uh, 
That was pretty ridiculous, wasn't it? Anyway, we want to go to the mines of the dog now, don't we? <laughs> We've been to the nether. Now we want to go mine some iron. So we're going to take the minecart to take us all the way down to the mines of the dog. And uh, this is going to bring us down to our branch mine down here. And uh, we can use the branch mine to do <laughs> some mining. <laughs> And uh, using this very handy minecart system, we can get ourselves back up once we've done the mining, right? Now we want to get back into the Moleshire itself. And uh, we don't want to go all the way up to Mole Town because that's a little bit of a mission to get there. Luckily, we've got another sort of entranceway here that is going to take us all the way up to the basically where we started this little experiment. Uh, all the way down at the base in Moleshire Valley. Here we go. <laughs> We're all the way back to the beginning. Um, so what's the point of all of this? Well, the point, my dudes... Are Aside from entertaining you with super derpage, give me one second to real life face palm. Let's do it together. Three, two, one. And that was a particularly hard one. That's going to leave a mark, man. Let me tell you. Uh, the point of all of this was just to show that even though our base is kind of all over the place at different levels and different heights and whatnot, it is uh, a practically designed base, so to speak. It's nice to nice and easy to travel all around to the different areas of it, and that pleases me. That's uh, exactly what I wanted to achieve in the Moleshire base. So, all is well. Also, by the way, guys, I've got a serious sweat on right now. Uh, the heat is starting to really kick in. I'm sweating on my elbows, which I do believe is not possible. Uh, I don't think elbows can sweat, nor can knees, and... Yep, I've just confirmed I'm, I'm, I'm definitely sweating on my knees right now. So, uh, very good. I, I just feel wonderful. I feel like I've climbed in and out of a swimming pool right now to play Minecraft. But it's okay. We are going to press on. Because we've got important stuff to do together, you and I, my dudes. And that is uh, making our bedroom. Which is a very important part of any Minecraft base. We've just been talking about making your Minecraft base easy to uh, navigate, right? Well, one of the most important things about a Minecraft base is a bedroom. And <laughs> we are working on our bedroom. And yeah, we can get into the bedroom via the life tree. But we can also get into the bedroom via this staircase, which we set up last time. And the last time we were together, uh, I did a little bit more excavating. I made the room a little bit bigger in this direction and this direction. However, we got a bit of a problem. On this side, we're busting into uh, Griswold's blacksmith, <laughs> which is bad. So we can't actually go any further than this, unfortunately. And on this side, we are busting into the, uh, well, the outside of Moltown up there. So we can't go any further than this. Uh, which means, I thought what we could do is maybe make some sort of an arching roof over here, which might be pretty sweet. I think we still got a couple of blocks to go uh, upwards. Let's try to figure out exactly how many. Okay, so we got maybe two blocks more up uh, to go. And that'll give us quite a nice deep roof which is kind of what I want in the bedroom. I don't want the bedroom's roof to be this high, right? Because that is really claustrophobic. On top of that, I think we're probably going to make the floor of the bedroom at this level um, because, well, I don't really want to be jumping up here. I suppose we could drop the entrance down, uh, but I want to make the floor out of planks or something like that, right? So we kind of do need another la like layer of blocks over here. So the floor is probably going to be one level up here. And uh, it's probably going to ma be made out of spruce wood. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But that's going to be floor level over here, right? So we want to try and make the, the roof as high as possible so that we don't feel really claustrophobic in here. Um, so yeah, that is the plan for today, my dudes. You know what? I'm not even going to cut right now. I'm just going to carry on playing because, I don't know, I'm, I'm really enjoying <laughs> playing some Minecraft this afternoon. Uh, really felt like playing some survival been playing a lot of modded minecraft and it's been kind of cooking my brain a little bit you know what i mean guys it's uh, it's been pretty intense and it's always nice after some serious modded minecraft to just sort of get back into survival where it all began you know modded minecraft came after minecraft survival of course and uh, it's it's awesome but at the same time there's there's something beautiful about the simplicity of uh Minecraft survival, you know, where you don't really have to think that much um, and the technical stuff is more about making the game look amazing rather than actually uh, making technical machines and whatnot, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> really, really sweet to be back here in the Volshire. and uh, I guess what we're going to try and figure out here is exactly how this roof is going to work. So we've got three blocks over here. And I think we'll have some stairs or something over here, maybe. Let's just start excavating. Let's just start digging these these uh, th this, these blocks away. Let's start raising the roof a little bit up in here, man. Um, now, this morning, when I was thinking about what we were going to be doing today, guys, in this episode, uh, I started thinking about this bedroom that we're making. And it got me thinking about uh, something kind of weird that I wanted to tell you about. And I've got a question 
for both the older cyber dogs out there uh, and the younger cyber dogs out there, okay? So if you're under 13 uh, or over 13, this question applies to, to both of you, okay? In fact, it applies to all ages. And <laughs> this question is going to be about um, uh, post posters, posters. Uh, you younger cyber dogs probably don't even know what a poster is. Uh, which is kind of sad because posters were a very big part of my life when I was when I was small. Uh, I did love myself a poster. And of course, when I, what I'm talking about when I say poster, I mean like a massive piece of paper. Uh, wait, we don't want to dig this away. Uh, a massive piece of paper with some art on it, right? It, it could be anything. It could be like your favorite band. It could be a poster of your favorite computer game. It could be a poster of uh, your favorite actor. I don't know, whatever, right? Uh, I, that's the thing. I don't know if posters are still a thing. Can, can, can you younger cyber dogs out there let me know if posters are still a thing? Um, you older cyber dogs, you know exactly what I'm talking about, man. So you know what? First question goes to the older guys out there. Older guys and girls. What was the first poster that you ever had that you put up in your room? Because I, I know you older cyber dogs, you put some posters up in your room. Don't try to deny it. And we're talking, you know, anything from My Little Pony posters to Back to the Future posters uh, to, you know, Sega Genesis posters. I know you guys had them posters and I know you put them up in your rooms. And I'm very curious to see what your first poster was. Uh, to the younger cyber dogs, um, I guess the question is, have you ever heard of a poster? And if so, do you have a poster that you put up in your room? And if you have, what is it? <laughs> Okay, uh, you the younger cyber dogs got a much more compli complicated question than the older ones. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I I hope you're picking up what I put it down over here. Um, and the reason I'm thinking about posters, of course, is because when I was growing up, posters were a very important thing. Um, they were kind of like I don't know how to explain it. Really, it's kind of difficult to explain. Okay, like I'm sure it's the same now as it was uh, as it's always been, I suppose. But when you're when you're young. And I suppose when you're old too, your bedroom, right, or your home is sort of the representation of you. It's the representation of your personality, right? Like what you choose to put in your bedroom, what you choose to put in your, in your house is a representation of you as a person, right? So that poster that you choose to put up in your bedroom, you know, you make a very conscious decision what that poster is going to be. And that decision thus determines... Uh, what sort of personality you have, right? Or it might show somebody who comes into your bedroom what sort of personality you have. So, for example, uh, I don't know, if uh, you put up, like, posters of hamburgers and tasty fries, <laughs> that might say that, you know, you, you love yourself a burger and some tasty fries. <laughs> or if you put up posters of, I don't know, the beautiful girls or something, or one beautiful girl, some girl that actress that you really like that tells the world that, man, you, you really do like that actress, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so I think posters are kind of like an interesting social um, thing that gives you an insight into somebody's personality, right? Never really thought about it when I was young, of course, because, well, you just get a poster because you think it's cool. Uh, but I remember my very first poster that I had up in my room. And uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today because it's kind of embarrassing. But at the same time, I don't know. It's kind of cool. I, I remember when I first recognized that posters were cool it, it was on a particular day that i still remember uh because i don't know i just thought the poster was so amazing that i guess it's sort of stuck in my brain there was a bookshop that my mum used to take myself and my brother to whenever we went to the mall uh you know she would go do the food shopping um at the food part of the mall and my brother and I would go and uh, go to the bookshop and we'd go look at, at comics and uh, you know go check out some books and I don't know just go look around the bookshop because there was interesting stuff in the book in that particular bookshop a little bit later on uh, you know there was computer games in the bookshop too and we can go we could go play on a Sega Mega Drive there there was like a kid section uh, that had Sega Mega Drives in it <laughs> oh man good times good times uh, Anyway, uh, we were in, this, in the bookshop one day. My brother and I were just chilling, just looking at some comics and stuff. And all the way at the back of the bookshop was this massive, I don't know how to explain it. It, it kind of like a, a display 
of massive posters, posters that were about, I don't know, two meters by one meter, right? Like really, really big posters. And and they were kind of in like a, a, a rotisserie type thing. So you would flip from one, you'd flip the posters from left to right to look, you know, they were, I don't know how to explain it, man. Maybe I can, maybe I can make it for you. So there's a, like a pole like this, right? And then <laughs> There's a whole bunch of pages on this pole, right? So this is a page like that, and this is another page like this. And on these pages were the posters, like the real-life posters. And uh, if I wanted to see the next poster, I would flip the page this way, and behind this page would be another page, right? So I would flip this page this way, so it will get rid of the page, and boom, there would be the next page. And there was probably about 20 or so posters in this uh, display thing, right? And the first time I saw that, I can still remember, because it was literally the most awesome thing that I'd ever seen. This, like, the posters that were in this particular display uh, rack were all posters of heavy metal bands. Um, and I had never really seen uh, stuff like that, right? You know, I was watching cartoons and reading, you know, comics like Superman and stuff like that. So I kind of knew a little bit about, um, I don't know, like, like skulls and demons and things like that, right? And fire and flames and things like that. But when I saw those posters on that day, I was just instantly in, uh, in love. I had found the, the, the type of pop art, the type of, um, you know, stuff that I guess my personality really, really liked. And the very first poster in that rack was a Megadeth poster. <laughs> and Megadeth is kind of like a super old school band uh, from way back in the day. Um, and I, of course, had never heard uh, Megadeth before, right? I didn't have their records. I didn't know what their music was. But the poster was just so amazingly awesome that I had to have it. It was a poster for a Megadeth record called Euthanasia. And I kind of remember the poster being pretty disturbing, <laughs> which is maybe says something about my personality that I kind of liked it. But it, I think it was an old lady hanging up a bunch of babies on a, on a washing line or something like that. <laughs> But I just remember thinking it was such a sweet and like edgy image. Like I just, I just wanted it so bad. And when my mum came to the bookshop after shopping uh, for food and stuff, I, I just begged her for it. I was like, mum, please, I must have this poster. And man, I, I always think about what my mum must have thought at that time. She must have thought, what the freak is my, my son getting into, man? What is, what is going on here? Anyway, my mum was always really nice with that sort of stuff. She, she was always very happy to like get me, you know, she, she didn't question if I, if I liked something or didn't like something. She would just sort of, you know, say, okay, fine, whatever. Uh, it's a phase, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing, I guess. And uh, she got me that poster and I couldn't wait to get home. She got me some poster and some press stick is what we called it in South Africa. What do you guys call stuff that you stick posters on your wall with? I'm, I don't even, as I said earlier, I don't even know if the, if the kids of today, the youth of today even have posters um, that they, they could use to stick up on their walls. But anyway, we use something called press stick to stick posters on our walls. And uh, I got home and I stuck that Megadeth poster above my bed with pride. And I thought it was the most awesome thing that I'd ever seen in my life. And over the course of the next few months, I guess, uh, I would get a few more posters um, for my room. All like metal posters, like Metallica and <laughs> Foreigner and Deep uh, and like stuff like that. <laughs> Black Sabbath. Even though I'd never listened to like any of these bands, I didn't know the music at all. I just thought the posters were so freaking sweet that I just had to have them, right? Um, anyway, Oh, th those posters stayed up on my wall for a couple of years, and in my last year of junior school, the, the Megadeth poster that I had got when I was uh, a, a few years younger became an even more important part of my life. You see, this Megadeth poster was stuck directly above my bed, and I always saw it as my favorite poster, right? It was like my absolute favorite poster of all of them. Um, because it was the first one that I got, and I, I don't know, I, there was just something about it that when I looked at it, I just thought this is the coolest thing on planet Earth. And so, in my last year of junior school, I started... <laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing. Um, I started to do something with that poster that I don't understand to this day why I did it, but... At the time, it made a lot of sense. Let, let me just let me just tell you what I did because it is embarrassing, and I might as well just say it now. I built it up too much now, right? We we, we there's no turning back from here. Um, 
I started writing down the names of all the girls that I liked at school on the back of the poster. Okay, that's what I did. And by the end of the year, I had about 12 or 13 names on the back of that poster uh, of all the girls that I thought were really beautiful um, at, my, at my sister school. I went to a boys school, but we had like a sister school and we used to hang out with the girls all the time. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know why I started documenting this. I guess it was just a, a way for myself to remind my... I, I have no idea. I can't explain it. Can you explain the way that... Um, a 13 year old brain works i don't think it's possible uh anyway i started writing down the names of these girls on the back of this poster and uh after my my last year of junior school i went to high school and i, I went to a, a boarding school outside of the city that i was living in um and that poster didn't come with me it stayed in my room and uh unfortunately <laughs> i'm not entirely sure what happened to this poster and i i do need to ask my mum one day if she remembers this poster because uh, I went off to high school and, and I went to a boarding school right for high school and um, we would be there for about three months or so uh, the terms were about three or four months I guess so I went off to high school and uh, four months later I came back for my very first holiday from high school and and I was super excited to get back home to play on my computer and to play on my uh, my Sega Mega Drive or I think it was a PlayStation 1 at that point and uh, play a whole bunch of computer games and of course try and contact some of them fine ladies that I had written down on the back of my me my Megadeth poster. You know what I'm saying? You guys uh, you guys know what I'm saying out there, my dudes? Oh, man. Anyway, couldn't wait to get home. And uh, unfortunately, when I got home that holiday, first holiday back from high school, well, the Megadeth poster was no longer there. And uh, all the other posters were gone too. And uh, I asked my mum about it. And I think, I think we... We probably had a fight about it. I can't really remember uh, what happened. I was quite upset, though. I remember sulking for quite a while about it. But my mum said to me, you're a grown up now. You don't, you know, you don't have posters on your wall at this age, man. You're in high school now. It's, start to, it's time to start growing up a little bit. And she was 100% right, of course. But of course, what she didn't know <laughs> was on the back of that poster were the names of a whole bunch of girls that I thought were really hot. And the ones that I thought were, like, very, very hot, I I, I had um, drawn a heart next to them, which is super embarrassing. And, of course, to this day, I have no idea whether or not my mum uh, saw the back of that poster or if she just took the poster down and, and threw it away or whatever. Uh, I have no idea. And I really do hope that she didn't see the name <laughs> the names at the back of that poster because, man, that would be super embarrassing. Um, anyway, that is the story of the poster, uh, the Megadeth poster. <laughs> and, uh, guys, if you are, if you guys out there have any poster stories, man, please hit me up in the comments. I'd love to read them. And I'm very curious to know if you younger cyberdogs out there actually still have posters in your lives. And if you do, uh, where the, where do you even get them? I suppose these days you get them online, don't you? You probably get them from Amazon or something. Um, back in back in the day, we had to go to the go to the bookshops and stuff to get posters. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, that that that's the poster story, and I'll I'll definitely ask my mama dog about the Megadeth poster, see if she can remember. <laughs> I'll keep you guys updated. Um, but yeah, bedroom's looking good. It's looking kind of weird though. So I'm going to take a little bit of a moment here, guys, to get this place looking a little bit more decent. And I probably need to sleep too. So I'll be back in three shakes of a lamb's tail. Kablam! Well, Cyberdogs, this room project is actually going to be a little bit more tricky than I originally thought. We are, uh, well, kind of squeezed into a rather awkward space here in the side of the Molshire cliffage. And I'm doing my best to make use of the space here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really go that way anymore because the blacksmith is there. We can't go this way because that's on the other side, out, coming out the back of the side of the mountain. We can't go up, of course, because that's the top of uh, the Molshire Valley. <laughs> And uh, we can't go down because that takes us to the second floor of uh, the mole hole lobby. So, yeah, we've got to be a little bit smart here. I thought maybe what we could do is instead of using a solid block for the floor, we could potentially use some uh, some slabs instead, right? So we could drop the, the height of the floor down by half a block, which could help us out a little bit, right? That could help uh, to, to give us a little bit more room here. Uh, but I've come up with a couple of cool things so far for, that, for the bedroom over here. Firstly, we've got a couple of cupboards over here here that I would like to create for us very quickly. And uh, when I say cupboards, I 
basically mean chests uh, because, well, we can't really make cupboards in Minecraft. But yeah, we've got a couple of, of decent uh, areas here that we can stick some chests in. And we don't really need a ton of chests in our bedroom, right? I just want to be able to keep my favorite stuff or my most important stuff, I suppose, here in, in the bedroom. Uh, I don't want to make this a storage area or whatever. So we'll maybe have like three rows of chests here. Maybe have a couple more chests over here too where we can store weapons and ender pearls and useful stuff like that. Um, but I need to work out that. So that could be pretty cool. We have a couple of chests over here. Maybe we have an area over here for different armor sets. So we could have like armor stands with the different types of armor that we might have uh, in the series. And uh, what I want to do though, which is going to be cool, this is all sort of normal Minecraft stuff, right? Everybody has uh, some cupboards and some armor stands. I want to have a spot where I can throw stuff out of my inventory uh, and it goes straight into the storage hole down there, into our storage facility. And luckily, I realized something pretty sweet, right? We do have some sort of a system in the blacksmith right now where we can deposit stuff that we cook into the blacksmith to be stored inside of the storage hole. Let's get our butts into the blacksmith real quick and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. And I think we could make use of this mechanic to make our bedroom, uh, well, actually a useful bedroom to be in. So so over here, we have got a hole at the back of this, uh, well, cooling system where if we throw something, it's going to go down a chute. And that's actually going to take the, the, the item that we throw in here all the way via item aqueducts to our storage facility, right? Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Now, what we could do potentially is connect up our bedroom to this thing. I've uh, already discovered where we could connect it. So we could make basic, basically a pipeline over here, right? And uh, that's going to be pretty simple to do, I think. All we can, all we, we are going to need to do is get a bit of a, a water source going. And we could probably put, I don't know, like a, a staircase or something over here. Um, and here we could chuck items into it. And that, of course, is going to make those items flow all the way around the corner over here and i guess what we need to do is make a couple of signs uh so that we can sort of control where those items go so let's just get janky over here and <laughs> let's make a couple of signs um but yeah this could work really really well right because i like think about when you play minecraft you go mining or you go exploring or something you get back to your bedroom and your inventory is full of stuff and it's super annoying and uh i want to be able to just like clear my inventory out right when i get back from an exploration and uh, all of the stuff will end up in the storage room for sorting later on. I think that's a really, really sweet plan. Uh, now, the problem here, of course, is that we need to get this water to flow all the way into this. And I think what we're going to have to do here is um, make use of maybe a staircase rather than a sign. This needs to go all the way into that water source. But of course, that's not going to work, right? Because when these two waters connect, it looks like it's going to cause some problems. So if we throw something in here, let's have a look how the item flows. Yeah, it sort of stops in this block here. So I'm thinking if we pop a sign over there, that's going to make this water flow over the top. So that doesn't really help. Wait, we could pop a sign here and pop a sign here, right? That should do it. And maybe another one here, maybe? Is, is, is that going to work? We need to get... Hmm. Hang on. Let me try and figure this out. Oh, now we be cooking with gas. Sabba diggity dogs. <laughs> Managed to crack the nut on this one. Check it out. We've got a sign down here which stops this water flow from the bedroom, right? So any items that come from the bedroom are going to drop down this, uh, this hole. And that is also now broken because we need a water source down there don't we yeah because we were relying on the water source coming from the blacksmith to continue flowing down there uh, but as you can see we have stopped the water flow from the blacksmith on another sign above that one over there and i guess just to get the whole system flowing again we just need to get some water flowing over here and hopefully this is going to be enough water to go all the way to the edge. Yes, it does. All right. So it goes all the way to the edge. And of course, this is the rest of our item aqueducts. These aqueducts are picking up items from various parts of our base. And uh, they all end up at the same place for those of you guys who perhaps never seen this. And as you can see, there's a bunch of item aqueducts and a squid in it too. Nice. Uh, all of the items eventually end up in this final delivery aqueduct here, which sends the items into an item elevator over there and uh, those uh, the items eventually end up in the storage hole so yeah we're pretty deep underground right now and i need to get back upstairs and find myself some more food but yeah we made it work man that's awesome uh we can now throw items away in our bedroom and they'll eventually end up in the storage hole although i think we probably need to test the system first though just to make sure it's actually working all right cyber dogs item aqueduct test mark one 
uh, is about to commence. And Griswold, dude, uh, I think you're literally losing your mind from all of the gas up in the blacksmith. I mean, you've been you've been staring at that iron ingot for about an hour now. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Pull yourself together. Anyway, uh, we need to test out our new aqueduct system over here, guys. So, first things first, I think what we're going to do is throw two ender pearls into the system. One in the blacksmith um, collection hole and one in the bedroom collection hole, right? And then we'll head down to the storage facility. And if we've got two ender pearls in the, the chest down there, then of course the system is functioning. So, first ender pearl goes in here. There we go. That's going to get sucked down and sent down below. And uh, now let's head over to our bedroom and throw another ender pearl into the system and it, that should confirm whether or not our item aqueduct collection system is actually functioning. One of my favorite parts of this base, by the way, the fact that we can collect items and stuff like this from all over. Hello, spider. What's going on, my brother? Another reason to turn our floor into slabs. Am I right, guys? We don't get any, any mobs spawning up here. Uh, anyway, here's the bedroom one. So, ender pearl, be on your way, please, my dude. And if we've done this correctly, we should have two ender pearls down down there in the storage facility just want to quickly double check that this has been done correctly and uh, yeah as you guys can see we've got a sign over there stopping this water flow then a sign over there that stops this water flow and these two signs stop this water flow flowing over the top of that sign into that water flow if that made any sense uh, considering I said the word flow about 16 times um anyway that's probably going to be enough time now for those ender pearls to have arrived in the storage facility of course it does take a little bit of time right the items have got to flow through the water canals eventually we'll upgrade all of the canals to uh, packed ice and that'll make the items flow much faster but for now they're kind of running on snail speed i guess and uh speaking of snail speed we should probably sleep this night away so let's make use of our awesome awesome moleshire transport network to get quickly up to the room of the bedroom of the outside just outside of Gobelia's house. And this reminds me actually, let's just make sure that new Gobelia is safe because this is how Gobelia the first died last time. Any zombies in here? No, we're good. All right, excellent. Let's go have a look if our ender pearls have arrived safe and sound. Hello, can we get out? Thank you very much. Uh, let's go have a look if we've got two ender pearls in the system. And if we do, guys, that's going to be a job well done for today's episode, man. Bedroom is coming along a tree. We have uh, another item delivery system installed. I guess it's like a trash bin, really, uh, rather than an item delivery system. But let's get our butts into the storage hole. Also, let's have a quick check check up on Hell. Also, just make sure Hell is doing okay. Uh, there he is, beautiful, looking good. Also. Something that I forgot to do uh, since we've been down here is actually upgrade this map. I don't know if we'll be able to see any of the changes to the mole hole. We might be able to see just a few things. Yeah, it's looking a little bit different. Can't really see the changes. Anyway, let's check. Are there two ender pearls in here? There's one ender pearl in here. Dang it! Never fear, my friends. The Rendog brain is firing on all cylinders today. I have just worked out why the ender pearl, the second ender pearl hasn't arrived and it only took me about 30 seconds to do so. So that is awesome. The second ender pearl is stuck here in this item elevator somewhere, I think. It needs one more item to be shot up, I think. Uh, if we just dig through here. Yeah, it's probably in this dispenser. There it is. It's in the dispenser. Of course, the item elevator is only going to work as long as this item hopper is getting triggered, right? Because that sends the redstone into the uh, dispenser or into the dropper, rather. So, uh, with the ender pearl discovered in the dispenser, we can remake <laughs> the item elevator. And if we just drop a whole bunch of items here uh, into that hopper, that should get everything up there uh, safe and sound. And that is confirmation, my dudes, that our beautiful brand new item collection system in our bedroom is working and that pleases me greatly tell you what guys it's probably going to take me about half an hour to get back upstairs and uh, i'm going to say goodbye for now looking forward to reading your guys stories about your posters in your bedrooms and uh, yeah please hit me up in the comments looking forward to it man guys thank you so much for watching today's episode hey if you enjoyed it you know what to do man you smack that like button keep the rent digging it dog inspired baby and uh if you want well hit me up with a nice comment too always makes me feel good and of course subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with the series and all the other series on uh, me channel. Rendig and a dog signing up, my dudes. We'll smell you all in the next episode.